Ladies and gentlemen, sports fans alike, welcome to another edition of Bill Swirsky Sports Talk Chicago. One of the couple, two, three best podcasts around. So sit back, grab yourself a cold one and a pole of sausage, park your keister in the front room, and listen to Bill Swirsky Sports Talk Chicago. In Chicago, you know that all sports rock. The Bears, Hawks, Bulls, Cubs, and Sox. Pick your favorite, you can choose as long as the Packers lose. For everything you need to know, it's Bill Swirsky Sports Talk Chicago. Bill Swirsky Sports Talk Chicago. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Bill Swirsky Sports Talk Chicago. This is your host, Sean. Yes, odd episode today. Alex could not make it, but we're hoping to have some special guests on. So stay tuned for the guys from Bow. Uh, so on this episode, we've got All Star Selection Cubs, some come from behind win Cubs, talking basketball with the guys from Ball, a little bit of Bears. And a whole lot of fun. But first, I'd like to thank our sponsor, the Rockford Ice Hogs. If you're not familiar with the Rockford Ice Hogs, they're the AHL minor league affiliate of the Chicago Blackhawks. What does that mean for you? You get to see the stars of tomorrow today at family friendly, affordable prices. So head on over to icehogs.com. I know that the season is over, but that shouldn't stop you from getting yourself a hat, shirt, jersey, season tickets, and more. Tell them Swirsky Sports sent you. Hola to our fantastic listening audience. Uh, it's been a long time since we haven't had a co-host, so I'm trying not to sound like a total idiot being solo again. Uh, we will have some guests on in a little bit, but I wanted to take this opportunity to first uh, try to talk about a few other things, namely uh, Cubs and Bears. Um, I'm going to talk Bears first. There's really not a lot. We're in that weird period. Um, you know, there's a few real big lull periods in the NFL, and we're in one of them right now. The OTAs are over, draft is over, free agency for the most part is over. Uh, we are a couple weeks away from training camp. So it's just kind of twiddling our thumbs so a lot of the articles you'll see on sites that what they do is, is write nfl articles they are all what ifs um some real stretch new or rumors and um you know a lot of prognostications there's really nothing to talk about uh with that we're totally going to jump onto that bandwagon and do the same thing uh, the first thing I just want to say is I'm reading a lot of fans that are um, lukewarm in their eagerness to be excited about the Bears offense. And I think what pushed me over the edge was uh, I was talking to one of my stepdad's friends today, and he's a season ticket holder for the Bears, has been since um, like 2000. It's almost 20 years now. Maybe it's longer than that. Whenever they moved back into the renovated, it was the first season back after they played down in Champaign uh, during the renovations. Um, he's been a season ticket holder since then, so around 20 years or so. Uh, and I was saying how I'm on the season ticket waiter list, and I was hoping to move up a little more. Um, you know, for a couple of years, it was. So the way it works is you put like a hundred bucks down and then they move, they send you a notice of how far you move up into the standings to before you'll be able to get season tickets. And I was moving very slowly for a while. And then the last few years I've moved up a bunch, but I'm still not, you know, anywhere close. Uh, and I was saying how, I'm probably not going to move up more because I think the Bears are going to be exciting to watch. Does that mean I think they're going to make the playoffs this year? Probably not, but I think they're going to be exciting. There's going to, you're not going to see the stale offense. There's going to be growing pains, but there's going to be excitement on the offense. 
it is perfectly fine to be excited to be a Bears fan. That's There's nothing wrong with that right now. I mean, for the last several years, sure, you can be as negative as you want because it's deserved. Right now, it's not deserved. There's a lot to be excited about. Look, you've got a young quarterback. Did he have the best rookie season ever? No. But look at look at what they had around him. He was throwing to nobodies. Absolute nobodies. Garbage. The offensive line was not that great. And the the staff that was around him was just an offensive black hole, for lack of a better term. So what 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 did you expect from the guy? I, I mean, you played what twelve games in college, and you're ex- expected to come in to an NFL program where with awful offensive coaching, with awful wide receivers, with sub lukewarm uh, offensive line, banged up offensive line. I, what what did you, in vanilla offense at that? What did you expect him to have happen? But now what you have is you have a very innovative young head coach. You brought in an offensive coordinator that's coming from a high powered college offense. They're going to look at exactly what the skill set of Mitchell Trubisky is. They're going to maximize it. They're going to maximize, they're going to base this offense around what their quarterback does best instead of saying, well, this is our offense. You just got to fit into it. That's stupid is if you only, if you only have an offense that's stagnant and you have to find players to fit it, you are going to fail. You've got to be dynamic in what you do. And let me, let me say it with a clap. Gotta be dynamic in what you do. That's probably really awful for you to listen to when the claps in the uh, microphone. Uh, but but Mitchell Trubisky, they've got they've got an offensive mind around him, and it's not just one offensive mind; it's multiple. You've got a offensive coordinator, a offensive minded head coach. You've got Brad Childress, who's an, a consultant or whatever his title is. You've got offensive minds around him that are going to put him in the best place possible. And you've upgraded the weapons around him. Uh, you know, last year it was you had two running backs, and it was stale system that they were running in, and they still did well. This year, you're gonna have those two running backs, hopefully a better you expect to have a much better offensive line, if nothing more than just because of health. Um, but also due to lack of predictability. If you know a team's running, you stack the box. Makes it harder to run. If they don't know what you're doing, they you have the defense playing on their heels. The offense can drive the momentum of what's going on. Uh, but you've also upgraded the, the wide receivers. You've upgraded the tight end core. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, you've just added weapons around him or the, you know you do have a second year quarterback and it is a first year of the program there's going to be plenty of bumps but there's also going to be a whole hell of a lot of excitement teams are going to have a this team's going to have a blast they're going to go out there they're going to score points you're going to see things the bears never did before and my big hope is that the bears offense can be good enough to help out the defense, bail them out every once in a while. Um, so that's what I have to say about that is just don't be afraid to be excited. Don't be afraid to go to the store, buy a Mitch Trubisky jersey. Don't be afraid to buy a Tariq Cohen jersey. Be, be excited. Go out there. Be ready to go with some fresh gear for the first game of the season. And speaking of the defense is... I guess I probably wouldn't have talked anything about Bears except for I saw this rumor come through. And like I said a few minutes ago, it's a really weird time and you're going to see a lot of just outlandish rumors. But this one made enough sense to me that I felt uh, I felt like 
the bear or the you know that was worth talking about and something the bears could actually take advantage of. Um, the the report was that the bears could potentially make a you know a low end trade for outside edge rusher Shaq Lawson from the Buffalo Bills. If you remember, Shaq Lawson was a really highly regarded. Uh, edge or defensive player coming out of Clemson a couple years ago, um, graded in the top 15 players in the draft, I believe. Uh, I have to go back and pull my notes, but really, really well regarded, like solid first round pick edge rusher. And he's just really not performed like the Bills had wanted him to. And the Bills, you know, the report is that. The Bills might cut him during uh, before the season starts, so the Bears might as well go in there and try to scoop him up with a a low round pick to ensure that they get him. Because if you if you end up uh, if he goes to free agency with cut, then you've, you're competing to get him. If you send fifth sixth round draft pick, you, you know you lose a draft pick, but you guarantee that you get the guy. And the thing is, I feel like he's been a fish out of water. I feel like he's not an elite talent as far as NFL goes, but he's a talented enough guy that if you put him in the right situation and you coach him up well, I feel like he's got enough potential to be an impact, impactful enough guy to help out Leonard Floyd on the other side. Because that is the big, big weakness that the Bears have right now on the defense, on the team in general, is where is the outside pass rush coming from? I mean, there's still a possibility that they could bring back a, one of the, the guys they cast off you know, not too long ago, Houston or um, yeah, whoever else they... Willie Young, they, they could bring one of those guys back. I think they're all still on the street. But is is that really what's going to propel you? Is Shaq Lawson, I think, is only 25, still, still 25, 26 years old. So he's still right in that the young end of his prime. Is, you know, if you put him in a system with a really good defensive coach that has a good track record of getting the most out of players, then what do you have to lose? It's not like you're going to get that for whatever draft pick you have to give up for him. It's not like you're going to get that level of talent back. Sure, the salary is going to be more than you would with the player you know drafted in that round, but the talent is too. And he's still on the rookie contract. Um, so what do you have to lose? I think it's a good a good potential option. And based on the Buffalo Bills system they have in place is I don't think it's going to do any favors to Shaq Lawson. So I think he's his best interest of the player. And I think it's a good option for the bears. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know what else is going to occur uh, as far as camp casualties and cap casualties. Um, I, I, you know, it's not that often that, you get a guy that gets cast off that's still talented. Um, Shaq Lawson at least has some talent if he's never, you know, even though he's never really put it together in the NFL. But I, I think it's an interesting one. Um, it's much more realistic than the juicier story that I read about how Clay Matthews could be a cast off in Green Bay. Um, now that would be a fun situation for the fans, and I think this is a big, 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 big uh, what if that's not going to happen? A pipe dream, I guess you'd call it. If the Bears, if nothing else, be like take Clay Matthews for like a one or two years, just to watch him play against Green Bay and sack. Uh, I almost said Brett Favre. I wish Alex was here because he would just laugh endlessly at me being old and calling him Brad Farr. But Aaron Rodgers, if he could go and sack Aaron Rodgers, chase him down from behind, that would be fantastic. Um, 
You know, I, I think it's much more likely that Clay Matthews will, if it ends up being a cap issue, if he ends, he'll end up, uh, you know, reworking his deal before he gets cut and goes to the Bears. So it's a real pipe dream. Um, I think that's really all I had about the Bears. I just wanted to talk about those couple things uh, and move on from there. Um, I guess we can move on to the Cubs. Um, there's a lot to go on with the Cubs. Lots and lots and lots. So we'll, we'll start, I think, with all-star voting that got announced today. Uh, Cubs have three players on the all-star team. Um, John Lester, who I think that was a given that he was going to be on the team. Javi Baez, who's just super well-deserved. This is a really, really well-deserved. And Wilson Contreras, who after the game today broke down in tears because of just the sheer joy that uh, making the all-star game, the all-star team meant to him. Um, and that's really great to see is – I know the ultimate goal is a team goal of winning a World Series, but individual goals along the way to, on that path, I'm, I'm fully back those. If you're on a terrible team and that's all you're looking for is the, the personal accolades, dumb. I don't like it. But with Wilson Contreras, it's he's he's honestly, it's on the path to going to the World Series and winning it. Uh, but along the way, he's collecting these things, and and those are those are beautiful moments. And just seeing him, just the sheer joy of of just bursting into tears, he's so happy. That's great to see, and it's well deserved. Look at his slash line. You know, sure his power numbers are down, but but damn, he can hit. And Javi Baez, this is his slash line as it stands. Uh, well, before today's game, so this was through Saturday. 295, 328, 565, 17 home runs, 65 RBIs. That's real damn good. That is real damn good. Just look back a couple of years ago when he made his debut with the Cubs and had like a 90% strikeout rate. And that's exaggerated, but um, I'm not going to pull up the stat. But he was striking out like 60% of the time, something like that. And myself included, but everybody else, Let's get rid of this guy. He's never going to amount to anything. And look what he is. He's literally the most exciting player in baseball right now. And is he the best? No. Clearly, Mike Trout is better than everybody. Mike Trout is the best player in baseball. Possibly the best player ever in baseball. But Javi Baez is the most exciting player in baseball. And that's a cool place to be. Um. What do we got? Cubs, 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 Cubs. Oh, so uh, since we last talked, the we you know before the All Star break, we talked about how the Cubs had a, ser a short series against Detroit, series against Cincinnati, a series against the Giants, and then a series against the the Padres. And on paper, it looked like a a fairly easy record, especially since um, you know there's no Madison Bumgarner. In that contest or in that series against the uh, the Giants, so you, you in paper these should be, you know, you should win all four of those series. But then again, is you didn't expect to get swept by the the Reds the last time you played them. So in a four game series, um, so I, I didn't see either game against the Tigers. I was working through both, so I'm not going to talk about those. But these this Red series. Uh, they lost the first game of the series, which made five losses in a row to Cincinnati. What in the world is that? Five losses in a row to Cincinnati? Since Cincinnati, I get it that they've that they're a better team than their record because they're got a terrible record. But the Cubs should not be losing five in a row to the Cincinnati Reds, and five in a row to a team that they absolutely dominated dominated and then just a 180 reversal crazy um but the cubs scratched and clawed and found their ways to win games two and three to take the series and at this point you just you take the wins where you can and you 
you look at it as a positive. Um, yes, or, uh, today's win was six to five win that went in extra innings, and it was an uh, it was an ugly game. Honestly, is you look the home run given up by Lester, uh, the mis- the miscues on both sides that led to runs, um, the back and forth nature of of you know the the score, but ultimately it was a heads up play by Jason Hayward on the base path that you know Alex and I have talked about. Time and time again, uh, Jason Hayward is one of the better base runners in baseball, and it's it's great now that he's getting on base at a much better clip because you're seeing the the outcomes of him being on base. And this was a great play. You saw the lackadaisical way that they they brought the outfield from the Reds brought the ball in, and he took advantage and ended up scoring. And that was a huge, huge, huge part of this game. Um, and, you know, yesterday, I guess this was game two, you had the 8-7 win over the Reds. And that was a, a come-from-behind win. Another one, it was a big come-from-behind win. I think they were down at two different points by five runs. Um, and, and part of the reason that they were so down is Tyler Chatwood, again, looked like dog shit. Absolute dog shit sorry if your kids are listening but you know even your kids are looking at tyler chatwood like that's some dog shit you threw up there um his slash line was uh five five and two thirds innings nine hits four walks seven earned runs no matter how you slice that that's terrible and i think he had what two or three wild pitches on top of that um but you know the, the the crappy thing is, I, mean, I guess it's good in a way because the Cubs are winning. But with today's extra innings win, the Cubs have had to come from behind uh, in their last nine wins. So it means they were trailing in every single one of the of their last nine victories. It's nice to it's nice to be able to have come back come from behind wins. That's an important part of, of being a uh, contending team. But you need to be able to come out and take a lead and hold the lead. That's going to be important come playoff time. I, I really, truly believe that. Um, I just don't feel like these come-from-behind wins are going to 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 you know keep coming to fruition throughout the playoffs. Uh, all right, Chris Bryant. Um, we, we heard rumors that he might be back already, but clearly he's not. You've seen, uh, David Bodie. Um, you've seen Ian Happ. You've seen Javi Baez play third with Chris Bryant out. But the official word is Chris Bryant is going to get rehab starts Monday and Tuesday, which is, I'm recording this on Sunday. So tomorrow and the next day, he'll be at rehab starts, uh, with the, the, double a Tennessee team. And the hope is if everything goes well to meet the team out in San Francisco for that series, um, the tail end of that series, which would be nice. Um, and the Cubs at this point have two series left before the all-star break. They've got uh, three against the giants in uh, San Francisco and three against the Padres in San Diego. And unfortunately I will be, um, in San Diego a couple of days after they're gone. So I'll be there during all-star break. Uh, so I just miss out on them. And that sucks because uh, Petco Park is real nice. It's real nice. And to be able to see the uh, Cubs there, fantastic. Um, so I'm sad that I'm missing out on that. Um, I'm looking through my notes here. Oh, so I think... If I remember correctly, the first game of that giant series is going to be uh, started by Kyle Hendricks. Kyle Hendricks, Alex and I have talked about this before, that we don't know what the hell is going on with him. No clue. Um, and it, it's it seems to me that it's an injury. And I read a quote from Joe Madden, and he basically said the same thing that when he looks at a guy that has that just suddenly 
that had been performing at a high level and suddenly just isn't. Uh, it it seems to him that that's injury driven. And so I'm like, all right, well, we were on the same page with that. But then he said, it's it's not an injury issue. So what the hell is going on? Because in his last seven starts, Kyle Hendricks is one in five with a 6.29 ERA. That's terrible. That's Tyler Chatwood bad. Um, and NBC Sports Chicago actually did a little article about it that I kind of wanted to talk about um, where they talked with Kyle Hendricks. And he was saying something along the lines of his fastball command has been off, which duh, we've seen, we know that it's. Um, and he said that uh, the the changeup works off the fastball, and the curve works off the change. So if his fastball's off, that means his change is off, which means his curve is off, and it's just a downward spiral from there. Um, he went into more specifics about. Um, you know, some of his pitches and how they're, they're tailing inward and uh, more in-depth stuff, which you, you know, you can go read the article, but he really feels that it's a, it's a hitch in his mechanics and it's about um, how he's coming over the, the, the mound and he's watching video and, and trying to figure out, you know, how to get back into the proper mechanics and get this ship righted. Um, you know, so he's got one more start before the all-star break. So at least he'll have a little time off to, to, you know, a few extra days in there to, to try to work through it and, and and not throw off his rhythm, uh, you know, as far as, you know, missing a start or anything. So I, I, you really hope that that's the case. And, and if you look at it, the Cubs, I believe, I'm not looking at the standings right now, have the second best record in the National League or right up there with the, the leaders in the National League. So they're right up there. And if you think about it, is four of the five Cubs starters have underperformed. Quintana's underperformed. Hendricks is underperformed. Darvish has underperformed. Chatwood has underperformed. And you still have the second best record in baseball. Odds are in the second half, not all four of those guys will struggle. You will have somebody that bounces back, whether it's Darvish getting healthy and coming back and, and looking good, whether it's Quintana going through a rhythm, um, which I think is very likely as long as you're not playing the Braves. Hendricks finding his form. Um, and Chatwood figuring out what the hell is going on, which is the least likely. But the other three, I could really see any one or multiple of those three thing, things happening. And that's a good sign for the Cubs. If you can get two of those three guys back on track, um, suddenly things are looking up a lot more. Uh, and if, you know, if you can get those guys coming back early on the earlier side, you know, before the trade deadline, it eases up the burden on the front office staff of the Cubs because the, the trade deadline is going to be an interesting one for the Cubs. What do they do? Do they try to go and swing for the fences and get a guy like Manny Machado, who is absolutely going to help this offense sustain and score runs? Uh, or are they going to try to bring in another starter and, um, you know, stabilize this rotation that has been, for the most part, way underperforming. Way underperforming by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, if you can get Quintana and Hendricks back on track and you get Darvish healthy and working th towards that, that makes it a lot easier for the front office staff. They don't have to make any moves. They're not behind the eight ball. They can make moves if they make sense. They can make moves if the deal works out, but they're not stuck. Like in 2016, when you had to go out and get, um, a, you know, a role as Chapman and you had to pay what it was to get him because you needed him. If you can get these guys healthy and, and playing well, you're, you're not in a desperate need for anything. All you are is 
you're basically if a, if a good deal that's a low cost, high reward type move is available, then you can take it. But you're not stuck having to do something. If that makes sense. Um, so that's really all I have about the Cubs. Uh, I think now is a good time. I uh, would like to uh, welcome the guys from Ball. We'll transition over and talk some some basketball. Uh, I want to thank the guys from Ball for being Bow. on the show, Big Dave and Seed Dub. Uh, if you guys don't know the show, uh, check them out. It is honestly one of the best podcasts around, not just sports. It is one of the best podcasts around. Um, you guys haven't done a, a ball episode in a while, but they're ball on bulls uh, on the regular. Uh, yes. So you want to uh, give you want to give uh, all your your info to people check you out. Yes. Uh, well, I'm Big Dave, uh, co-host of Ball. Uh, I'm glad. Thank you. First of all, thank you for all the wonderful things you just said about us. <laughs> um, I, I'm glad you said that about Ball because I'll be uh, uh, editing the show this week for Ball. So we should have a new ball up um, the week after, along with a brand new ball on Bulls, which we will start the Tournament of Trash this weekend, fifth annual Tournament of Trash this weekend. You can find us on Twitter, at Ball Sports, and on Instagram, at Ball Sports. Yes, and I am Chris, a.k.a. C-Dub. Uh, we also got a website, believe it or not. You know, this, you know, this streams the audio. Uh, Ballsports.com, B-A-W-L Sports.com. And uh, hey, if you guys like us on the show, you go. We got sound, sound pretty nice. You can donate, blue yes. donate button on the site. We have a couple of fans who, for some reason, you know, feel the need to give us money and support us. <laughs> but you know, we say thank you. Uh, we do. Thank you. For and check us out. We're on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play Podcasts, TuneIn Media, uh, anywhere you listen to podcasts, you're gonna hear our wonderful voices there. So check us out. All right, so. I got a lot of Bulls questions because there's been a lot going on. And yes. uh, it, Alex is not on this week. Uh, he he uh, is working, so he could not join this week. But we've talked a lot about the, the draft and, you know, free agent rumors. But we're at the point now where the Bulls have made a trade, mm -hmm. where we got rid of Jaron Grant, who mm -hmm. had the court vision of Helen Keller. <laughs> Why do you got to be like that to Helen? That's just not right. <laughs> Helen had some skills. Hey uh, man, she gets four assists. <laughs> I, I, I'm only assuming that this trade is basically we got a non guaranteed contract and mm -hmm. the guy's going to be waived, and this is creating cap room and a roster spot. Yes, yes, absolutely. I, it's definitely a money move. And, uh, Getting rid of J uh, Jerry and Grant, like, like you, it's a win-win for me. Like I, I, it was a nothing trade for me. I'm like, okay, they clear some space because they obviously um, want more room to you know sign a free agent or two. Uh, maybe if not this year, definitely next year. So yeah, win-win, win-win. So I mean, that's sort of what it seemed like. But what what are they making room for? Are we mm. actually going to sign a real free agent, or are they using this room? to bring on a, a crap contract and try to get some assets uh, in order to take on said bad contract. <laughs> I mean, well, I, I'm basically, I'm asking is, are we bringing on mellow? No, I, I, I guess you're asking, you know, are the Bulls going to be uh, pursuing some uh, high end free agents next year? Right? Yes, they are. <laughs> Cause, Cause there's Who? No, nothing left this year. Well, you know, I, I, I don't know. Um, you know, of course, they they, they matched, uh, they signed Levine, you know, they matched his contract. And I, I think that was a good um, a good signing to keep Levine on board. And, yeah, it's all about next year, man. I, I think they really want to hit a home run. Because even with Levine signed, they still have plenty of money, plenty of space to sign, a, you know, a nice contract. So I think 2019, man, is, is what they're looking for. Uh, you know, John Paxson has spoken about just moving up and forward after after the, after last year. He's like, we're just going to get better and better. Like this is like, this is it for him. You know, he, I think he's tired of tanking and whatnot. So I think he wants to really uh, next year really progress, especially with LeBron James going in the East. You have a chance to make the playoffs, being a crappy team. 
And so, yeah, I, I think 2019 is what they're looking for more, more or less than uh, this year to sign a free agent. So you don't think they're going to bring on any bad contracts to get draft picks? <sighs> they already. Have, I think they're really. I, I, I think they're really in the mode of trying to win. Uh, I, th- I think you always could use draft picks, but I really think. I mean, they have a lot of money, man. Like I don't. I don't know, I don't know how much more space they need. They they did all that. They, they should be done with doing that. Taking a bad contract, getting the wrong kind of space, bro. <laughs> uh, they should be done with that. They should be trying to build and bring in a free agent. That's what they need to do because they can't. They haven't. The, the by taking and these last two drafts, they haven't you know drafted a superstar. Maybe Laurie Marketing could be one. They mm-hmm. drafted very good players. Uh, I, I don't see taking on bad contracts and signing old people. Um, it's going to really help them out in the future. Um, yeah. Too much, too much. So I, I think they they're just kind of a step backwards. I think you have to do it some at some point, some point. But I think it's, for them, it may be more of a step backwards. I think now they're looking on building what they have now. And they add it on next year. And pray to God somebody falls in their lap. And I want to look at the, the free agent class for next year. It's pretty high. Let's see. Got Rand, Rand. Yes. Durant. It'll be uh, Kawhi. Not happening. Yeah. Uh, I think from what I'm hearing is Anthony Davis is the guy they want. But I don't think he's a free agent until the year after. Right. Correct. I don't, know what you, after. I don't know what yeah. you're getting. I don't know what you're getting next year. Um, they, they're going to go for, I mean, whatever. they're definitely going to go after Kawhi. In my head, they're, they're going to go after Kawhi Leonard because he might be the only one you have a actual shot at, which they probably won't have a shot. <laughs> but he's the one who's like an actual chance of, you know, taking a meeting, uh, an actual meeting with you. You know what I'm saying? And be like, yeah, maybe I might, you know, check your team out. So. I mean, Kawhi might want to go to L.A. He might want to go all these other places. But, you know, money talks, man. And if he he obviously wants the money. So if the Bulls want to give him that, he's going to have to take a look at us. Especially the East. If he wants to win the championship in the East, you know. Uh, well, win the championship period. Uh, it's going to be hard for him to go to the West with LeBron. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Yes. West. yes, yes. And so, I mean, I, I think it's a long shot person. I don't think it's going to happen. You know, I think the Bulls may be stuck and not yeah. get a big free agent. Again, but <laughs> but that's their plan, and yeah, I I just don't know if Kawhi wants to come to the to the Chicago and you know uh, well, elite me, West let Coast. Me, let me add let me add to that though. That's why I think this year is very important for the Bulls because they're not only just playing you know to get in the playoffs and to get better. They're playing. They're putting themselves on display for the rest of the league. All the free agents out there who might look at them and say, "Yo, I'm, I want to come play with that team. That team looks fun. That team looks good." Larry Market, that looks like a team I can vibe with. So this year is very important for them um, as far as how they look and how they jail together. So who knows what could happen? Like I say, money talks, man. So we'll, right. we'll see. An interesting free agent name. I just looked at a list. Clay Thompson. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the guy they mentioned before. And uh, it's interesting because, like, I don't think Clay Thompson is a number one. I mean, I think, I think if Clay Thompson comes to the Bulls in the East, I think they're a playoff team, but you know, I, I, you know, to win a championship, you got to have a superstar. Mm-hmm. And I just, I'm sorry to say that I don't know if one's coming 2019 to the Bulls. Bulls may be in the Hall of the Very Good for a while again, but mm-hmm. it's a very good team, a lot of talent, make the playoffs a bunch of years, but we'll never win a title. Mm-hmm. And I think, unless Kawhi comes here by, by a miracle, and yeah, after one year, I don't think it would be. That long, because I'm still. Do you think Anthony Davis will actually take a look at us? Do you have higher hopes for Anthony Davis than you do for like Kawhi Leonard? Yeah, I do. Okay, so do. that's what an extra year. That's like two years of waiting for Anthony Davis and us getting better yeah, and yeah. marketing progressing. You know, what I'm saying into something that I mean, you and I both think he's a stud. You know, so he grows. Let's say Zach Levine grows. They Chris Chris Dunn grows. It's, you know. Well, uh, Wendell Carter Jr. grows like, I mean, it, Bulls can look really good to a free agent. Is what I'm saying. Like, if, if they play like um, Hoiberg has them playing in his mind, <laughs> if they play like that, then the Bulls, um, man, they can look really good. They can look really good to someone who wants to yeah, win. Yeah, Anthony Davis. That's about it. And then who else? Anthony Anthony Davis. I mean, that's well, cool. like forget only... everybody else. Then give me. <laughs> I'll take Anthony Davis every day. Like uh, if he does well. 
the, the, see, there aren't there aren't real options. <laughs> Give me your plan A. This we'll be uh, let's be playing A. Anthony Davis playing A. A, B, and C. <laughs> if, if, he's, <laughs> if he's healthy, right? If he doesn't get hurt again. Oh yeah, we gonna put that in the contract. You know the Bulls gonna have that in the contract, so you know. Yeah. Like I, got I, tell, a, oh, I got a question for you guys. Uh, let's just say hypothetically that the Bulls courted LeBron James, and he was interested in coming to the team with a, a young uh, Zach Levine, Lauren Markkinen, uh, Wendell Carter Jr., um, and. You know, he feels like he could take this team to the Eastern Conference Finals. And he wants a five-year deal, though, from the Bulls. Mm -hmm. Do you pay the five-year deal for LeBron James, knowing that this year he will be 34 years old? Yes. (laughs) So, so yes, I would take LeBron James on the Bulls in any case. Um, sure, absolutely. I would never say no to LeBron James. Come to Bulls, and it's funny. I like this hypothetical. So like, if he comes, it'll be a really good team in the East, and they'll go to the finals. I mean, like, you know. And, and another inkleness too is that you know you assume Boston's gonna be good, but of course now you hear Kyrie Irving, right? So like, mm-hmm. is Kyrie Irving leaving Boston? So that makes Boston a little weaker, yeah. and, the, and LeBron James and the Bulls with the weaker Boston team. It's all up in the air a little bit. As far as the East, especially with Kyrie Irving in uh, Boston, uh, they brought up something interesting. He said, "What about what if Kyrie Irving instead of LeBron James signing him?" Because yes, I would sign him LeBron James no matter what. But if that didn't happen, <laughs> would you take an Irving and a Jimmy Butler back to Chicago to compete? And I, I would say yes. I would take, even though I'm not the biggest Jimmy Butler, Jimmy Butler fan, he's a good player. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I would say I'll be it'd be dumb for me not to take those two players. But Irving, <laughs> yeah. but Irving's always hurt. But yeah, I would take that. I would, I would take those guys. Uh, one caveat: Who's your head coach? <laughs> but yeah, because I'm afraid we have one year left on this contract. It was, so, yeah, one I, or two years left. I can't remember. Yeah, I don't know if Jimmy's coming here with Hoyball. It's a good point. He don't oh. have much. He don't have much pool, man. Come on, man. Did you really, Jimmy? Yeah, Let's I say, don't. I don't, I don't yeah. do anything in the playoffs. Like, come you on. You know what man. I'm saying? Like, I don't. In my head, in, in my mind, and I'm sure in Chris's. He he doesn't have, uh, he's not at a level where he could demand coaching changes. Like you got to win first, you got to win a playoff series. You know what I'm saying? You got to do certain things. Just because you know you're All NBA third team a couple times, it's a few time All Star. He could be like, okay, I don't want this coach here anymore. No, nah, bro. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I get nah. that. Like you know, LeBron's got the clout where he's like, why well, I need Teron Lou to be my coach, and they're like, right. oh, well, here he is, but. If you're Jimmy and it's a low hanging fruit of who your head coach is and getting them fired, is that you know it's Ho- Toyberg? It's not like it's it's Pop. Yeah, but listen, if Lloyd Marketing says he likes Toyberg, <laughs> Hoiberg staying. Like that's just <laughs> that's how that go. Go ahead, Chris. No, I was just coughing. But uh, <laughs> but uh, but but yeah, and then you know. Then you have a whole whole the whole roster having to adjust a new coach and all that kind of stuff and you don't know. Um I, no, I just don't you know, it's not that it's funny, I think the Bulls is gonna be very good for a few years. <laughs> I don't know if they go in a championship. They just need a superstar to say, please. I just so told they, you the group, but I just told you how we do it. I just drew it so, out for you. It's Anthony Thomas. <laughs> Anthony Davis. Thomas. Anthony Davis, thank you. Um go, go to the Bulls. Um and uh, and Parker uh, uh, becomes this superstar all star Jabari Parker. Uh, he's, he's he's paid very low because he was injured, but somehow he really excels at being what he does. Wow, Parker's a really really great player. And then wow, look at this. We're paying cheap money to Parker because he was hurt. And then Anthony Davis goes, mm, I should go there and get paid a lot of money. And, and yeah, okay, that that happens. But if that doesn't happen, then we're just very good. And speaking Again. of Anthony, Anthony Thomas. <laughs> Not Anthony Davis, Anthony Thomas. <laughs> is, do you guys remember when McDonald's did the bobblehead of Anthony Thomas? I don't know. Oh. What did it look like? Uh, Al Jolson. <laughs> <laughs> they put a black guy in blackface. Oh, my God. Google, Wait a Google, Google. Oh, yeah. Okay, I think it was I, I don't yeah. know. I don't know what maybe is 
the other day at work, somebody was talking about a bear's bobblehead, and I just remembered that, like, I remember when that happened, and and what, you know, what a hubbub that was. I was like, how how did a multi-billion-dollar corporation have somebody go? Yeah, that looks all right to me. <laughs> yeah, let's, yeah, I'm looking at it right oh now. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, like, yeah for real. That's whoever terrible. whoever signed off on that wasn't just fired; they were so fired, <laughs> so hard. Like they got the Mr. McMahon from the WWE. You're fired. Like they, yeah. they got a real one. You're fired. In the box. Why does he have like a cane and a top hat in the box? I don't get it. Where <laughs> I'm just back. thinking it's like you know, Mr. Magoo approved this. <laughs> He's got right, big glasses know. squinting and looking. Is that a harmonica in his pocket? Like, what the? <laughs> Maybe it was somebody trying to get fired. <laughs> like, you know, you know, it's a sure way to get fired racism. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's still on sale for uh, $16.99. So $17, you can have it. Yeah. Is that, anybody out there listening is, you know, if, if you want a, a, a WTF moment, is Google. Anthony Thomas bobblehead and you'll see the pictures come up and you'll know exactly which one we're talking about. Oh, this is ridiculous. You know, it also doesn't help that he has on white gloves. <laughs> I know. It was like it was like a perfect storm of yes. of, of racism. Right. Just a, just a tremendous storm. I think I'm looking at a newer version of it, which is a little better. At the we did it. At the we done the version. They had no choice. <laughs> like nowhere to go but up from there. Like I'm looking at the Erlacher one and his. Like, how do you get? The, it's like they took Erlacher and just painted them. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that can make it worse is if they put like you know a cardboard picture of Becky calling the police on him for being at the public pool. <laughs> yeah, she's sticking her head out from the back <laughs> like, with the phone. Like, mm, gotcha. He stole that football. I know he did. <laughs> It's ridiculous, man. Oh man, uh, you should have this in your home. So, no, uh, uh-uh. somebody, should, you know. <laughs> I no, I would that. have this in my home just to remind people. <laughs> 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 uh, like, man, so what is that, this? Like, <laughs> you know, this is this is Chick Fil A didn't put this out, which you'd be like, all right, well, it's no. Chick Fil A. It's McDonald's. Right. Like, like that's the demographic that they they advertise to. <laughs> and they're, right. they're like, here you go. <laughs> and uh, I'm just looking at, uh, you just got me reminiscing about Anthony Thomas and how frustrating he was to me when I watched him play football like yeah. remember how he would just dance and we never wanted him to dance before yeah. he got to the hole like just run through the hole because your name is A-Train <laughs> like, like no man twinkle toes every time uh, so let's talk about this Zach Levine contract is uh the, the Sacramento Kings signed him to an offer sheet of roughly four year, eighty million dollars, and the Bulls matched it in about fifteen minutes. Uh, how do you feel about this contract? Um, I'm with it. I, I, I mean, what else are they going to do? Like, it, they I, they weren't going to let the guy. They basically that basically was the uh, centerpiece of the Jimmy Butler trade just walk out the door. So I knew they were gonna sign him. Um, you knew he was gonna he was gonna get his money, and the contract is front loaded, so it gives the Bulls a little wiggle room, you know, after the uh, second year. Plus, that's a good enough time to know in two years what you got when you when you see when you uh, take a look at Zach Levine playing. You can really get a you know you'll really know where, he, where you're standing with this guy in two years. Um, it's language in there that also protects them um, from his uh, injured knee. So if the knee becomes injured, it, it protects the, the team. The contract is also protected like that. So they uh, covered themselves somewhat with the contract. I think he's getting what, like, you said 80 million, right? 78 or 80 million, it's something se- like that. Yeah, somewhere around it's 78. There. Yeah. Uh, so they, they had to pay him, man. So I was just telling Chris this earlier that a team that doesn't have a lot of talent can't just let talent walk out the door. I don't care if you agree with how good he is. You can't disagree that the man is talented. He's a talented dude, basketball player. And you, you're not in a position to just let talent walk. So they had to sign him. It was, it was a must thing. But I think he can play. I, I, I was a fan of the trade. I, I still like him. Uh, he definitely has a lot of work to do. 
especially on the defensive end. But um, I yeah, got I got an argument interesting. with my friend Gary this uh, today on uh, text, and I, I he's a bull season ticket holder, and he was he was telling me he was okay with it, and I was like, I don't know, man, it's just a lot of money, and he he said. No. Uh, Zach Levine is the 44th highest payer in pay, highest paid player in the NBA, and I was mm. like, "Well, that speaks more about bad money management with the NBA than it does about you know him being the worth that money." Mm. Yes or no? Because you have to pay somebody. Mm. And so back a little bit, I like I like to thank Sacramento Kings for writing a contract for the Bulls. I think collusion. I think Sacramento. I think Bulls called <laughs> Sacramento. It was like, "Yo, give me this contract. Pretend like you know you want him." And then we're the silence to that contract, and it's like, bam, done, deal. Uh, but, but like they said, man, I, I, you know, I was told they, you know, you have to pay somebody. You know, the Bulls got all this money, and <laughs> if you don't pay Zach Levine, you're just gonna leave the money, you know, this big old pile of money, and don't use it. I mean, you got to pay somebody, man. Like in the league, NBA, these players get paid all this money because there's only so many players, and you got to pay somebody, man. You do. And I think if you're gonna pay somebody, you pay somebody who's junk. Who has a lot of potential, and you're paying that money you're paying for is for his future production, and that's the definition of Zach Levine. And I think, like Dave mentioned, it was smart of him to front load of all these you know little things in the contract to protect themselves from injury. So if there's ever a guy, and and, and like in today's NBA, that's not a ton of money, and the Bulls had that money and they had plenty of money to spare. So in today's NBA, if you were going to gamble on somebody, take a risk, an investment in somebody, it'd be somebody young. Athletic with great potential. They're not paying for past production. They're paying for future production. And that player is Zach Levine, like it or not. I think it's a good risk for him to take. And if you didn't pay him, like a freaking idiot, and you have a whack team. So, I think it's a good job by, by, by the Bulls. Yeah, you and you also have to look, just ask yourself if Zach Levine leaves, are you better? Are you worse? Or are you the same? Uh, I, don't think you're, I don't think you're better without him. You know, I don't think your team improves if Zach Levine leaves. So, you know, pay the man. Give him his money. Let's see what happens. Give me them two years, and then, you know, the Anthony Davis plan to kick in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. my, my friend Gary was sending me over uh, salaries of players, and it just sort of blow, blew my mind because I guess I don't pay attention enough. <laughs> but Drew Holiday's getting 26 a year. Otto Porter, 26. C.J. McCollum, 25. Wiggins, 25. Harrison Barnes, 25. Rudy Gobert, 22. Ibaka, 21. Oladipo, 21. That's a lot of money for mediocre players. Didn't they, they, they max out Covington? Did Covington get max? What's what, what, what Covington get paid? Yeah, okay. Uh, let me go see. Yeah, let me go see. We're clicking around now. I'm trying to get this... Uh... Let's see here. Four years, $62 million. Okay, and so you're complaining about Zach Levine. I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> Covington could get a shot for the playoffs. Like, <laughs> So that guy gets paid all his money, and you're bitching about Zach Levine. Like, come on. Not you, Sean, personally, but, like, come on, really? People, yeah. see what I'm saying? Like, they got this pile of money. Covington's okay. They may win, so they got to pay him this damn money. Right. Like, it's ridiculous. All right, like, in, in two years' time, are you going to be complaining about Zach Levine's contract being an albatross, or no. are you going to be happy about it? I won't. I won't be complaining about it. I know that. Uh, I don't. I don't. I'll be happy about it, knowing if he's a better player than um, what we saw in a short sample size. So if he's a better basketball player, yeah, I'm. I'm good with him. You know, having his money and doing his thing. But no, I don't think I. I would complain about it either way. No, I'm not complaining about it because, you know, it's a good risk to take. You know, it'd be it'd be different if it's backloaded and you have to pay him a lot of money, you know, in the back end, which you don't. And also, I think Levine, if, if he doesn't get an injury, injury or side, he's still a valuable player. Like, it's not like you, you have to trade him for a bag of bones. And, like, he's still a valuable one-on-one -on -one dribble, I can score player, which is valuable, which means you get things back in return. So even – at the lowest point, you're going to get value back from uh, from Zach Levine, and and like it's not backloaded. So and he's not terribly expensive, you know. I think he's paid about what he should be paying. You want to hope that the money you're paying him now is below value. You want him to overachieve to the point where next year you're like, wow, Zach Levine should be getting max. Like you should be paying, you know, getting paid like 22 or something like that. 
Now we got him at this value contract, you know, this kind of thing. And man, if you get hurt, we still ain't got to pay him money. So you want that position. And I think I think you're in the position for the Bulls. And I, I, I just don't think this is a, a ton of money for, uh, for this player. You know, you, you trade it for him, you value him, you see his potential, you're paying for that potential. Um, and you, you got to pay somebody. And he's there yeah. on the team, and they paid him and said, let's go, let's ride. It's not, it's not, it's not a crap load of money. This is not going to hamstring the Bulls going forward, I, I don't think. Right. All right. So on draft night, I was at the same draft party as you guys. You were lukewarm yeah, yeah, yeah. about about Wendell Carter Jr. Mm-hmm. After seeing him in his first summer league game, what are your thoughts? Go ahead, Chris. Oh, I I, I, I told Dave. I was texting Dave, man. He was destroying. He was killing on defense and like three blocks in the first quarter. And I called him Mr. Salad because like <laughs> it was like he played pretty much like I think his career is gonna go. He's gonna be like. 16 points, 10 rebounds, couple block shots, did my thing, did my job. I was solid on the game, set good screens, hit a couple jump shots at 302. He may not be exactly the reason why you win a game, but it's never going to be quite like his fault that you lost the game. But it, what impressed me about the first game is that he played like I think he's going to play for his whole career. You know, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? He did come out kind of um, jittery. And that, that he didn't shoot the ball a lot on offense. Granted, it mostly was defense, which is very impressive. What impressed me was that his quickness to the ball, his awareness of where the ball is when it you know goes off the rim. He was first to react to the ball, and on defense, uh, his body position on the people going to the basket, and and, and this anticipating having good good timing when blocking shots is very impressive uh, on defense. Offensively, he didn't show a lot. He had a couple of threes, but you know didn't do anything much to the back to the basket. Pick and roll. He rolled to the basket. Teams, the guys, and then you know, making he was going to give him the ball. He just rolled with his hands up. Was like, oh, okay, he shooting that. But uh, overall, it's very, it's very impressive. He played tonight. I uh, hope he has pretty much a similar game. But he played pretty much like exactly how I pictured him playing for his whole career in that one game. So it was, mm-hmm. it was, it was, it was, it was nice to watch. Yeah, I um, I saw, I saw, I watched the highlights. I watched a lot because I, I was uh, busy during that. Game. I was in a wedding. So I did. I did uh, get to see it live, but um, when I watched the highlights, like Chris said, it wasn't the offense that got me, except for the one play where he got the offensive rebound and stepped out to the baseline and hit a three. That was completely impressive to me. This dude is seven feet tall doing that. I was, I was like, okay, that's a flash right there. But for me, the defensive end is where I saw him flash. Of course, that block where you saw him just take that dude's soul off the backboard. <laughs> you know, when he blocked that shot with two hands, like. That was just disrespectful and almost shed a tear. Um, but you saw where he's going to help the deficient. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, the defensive uh, inefficiencies uh, the Bulls have, and especially someone like Zach Levine. You saw how he's going to protect them because I was showing Chris on the one play where he blocked the shot where Chandler Hutchinson just could not defend his man, and the guy blew right past him. And went up for the layup, and, and Wendell Carter Jr. came out of nowhere and threw it, you know, threw it out of bounds. That's going to happen to Zach Levine. Zach Levine is, you know, not a great defender. So when somebody gets by him, at least he knows he's going to be protected. Somebody's going to be back there. And Lloyd Marketing is a okay defender, too. I'm not saying he's super great, but he's definitely a, a rim protector also. He can definitely protect the rim. So five blocks in that summer league game, man. I was... Just very impressed with him on the defensive end, but he is definitely uh, who we thought he was. Word to Dennis Green, he's definitely uh, who we thought he was, but he's better defensively than I thought he was. Yeah, and another thing to back up, uh, Dave. Um, you know, a lot of you know we watched a lot of tape on him. You know, uh, you know on YouTube, a lot of videos on these, on these um, draft picks. And you know, one thing that that stood out was his uh, ability or inability maybe to guard a pick and roll very well. And uh, that one game, the one snapshot we saw, man, he seemed to do a decent job of guarding pick and roll and picking yeah. up guys going to the basket. So That's we'll, true. We'll, we'll see, you know, against other teams, uh, different types, types of guards that attack him, how, how he handles when he's really in open space, you know, one-on-one and things of that nature. But for that one game, he looked competent in doing and guarding it. So yeah. we'll see it going for. But, yeah, he looked, he looked way more, a little more spry and way more aware than, uh, than I thought. So he looked, way- he looked like a veteran. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and the one the one thing I didn't get to see from him that I'm I am excited is 
is his ability to pass. And I, I think I think that's going to be impressive when he's playing with uh, Zach Levine and, and Larry Markkinen. Uh, you're going to see him see how his, he's a good big man passer. Yeah, you know, I, yeah, especially with this team, the Bulls uh, has a ton of three point shooters. So you look for him to have high assist totals, you know. Um, so he's not passing about pass the ball out to scrub. So he passed up the guys want to catch and shoot. So he definitely that definitely should shine if that's part if that's a big part of his game. Mm-hmm. It's a huge I, and the other thing that really impressed me about him was his feet. He the way he moved his feet on the defensive end and stood with those guards because I was that was just impressive. Like he's on the top at the top of the perimeter, he's at the top of the key. Defending, you know, this guy and his feet, man, his quickness. And, um, yeah, he just was not out of position. Like, he he definitely uh, let everybody know, I'm here. Like, and people would always say, well, you know, it's summer league. And I tell anybody, I don't care what league it is, you know, you know when somebody's good when you see them. And you know when somebody's summer league good. So yeah, when I mean, we saw – I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's, uh, you know, watching him, I think the most impressive thing for me is – we saw the things on tape at Duke that we thought he had to work on. And it looks like he's already been working on it because he stepped mm-hmm. up and showed improvement already in the summer league. And that was, that was a good sign for me. It's like that he's not going to rest on his laurels, that he's going to come in here and he's going to work and, and improve. Yeah, of course. And, uh, you know, he talked a good game, you know, doing the combine, um, and also, you know, he lost, of course, the magic of late weight loss he had as well. <laughs> so, to show he's dedicated, and uh, he's very—he he definitely talked like he was very confident in what in what he's capable of doing. He knows his game. You know, I think he—he he knows that he's not going to score thirty a game. I think he knows that his spot, his role, and what he's going to be in the NBA. I think he's—I think it's pretty good that he can, he kind of knows that right off the bat. Instead of wondering like Zach Levine, who am I? What am I? He's like, no, I'm. I ain't meaning how Al Horford. That's where I am right now. So I'm just gonna do that, <laughs> be solid, and play my game. So I think he, I think he kind of already knows his game. But like you know, that's the first game. You know, we'll see. We'll, you know, we'll see in the some of the games when you know if he could continue uh, that play on a high level. But the defense is definitely there. You know, it, it seemed like the, it seemed like his awareness was there. That one block shot reminded me of Bill Murray coming up on that kid in Rushmore, hammering it down. <laughs> I see Rushmore in like twenty years. <laughs> I like, I like, I like the fact I'm on the show that gives a rush a Rushmore reference out of nowhere. Like, I just, awesome. I just remember, I just remember, I like the movie a lot, so I, I just gotta. So, yeah. Oh man, <laughs> so, so I've got one more question: is is this the Bulls roster we see come first game of the season? Or are the Bulls going to make some more moves slash signings? Oh, um, go! I, I don't go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, I, I would say most likely so. I mean, they're not going to get rid of, let's say, Robert Lopez. Yeah, I think I think they set up have a pain being being a backup point guard. Uh, Valentine's going. I don't see anybody moving or going anywhere. Time soon. Is, is Paul Zipsa still on the roster? No, he's gone. Right. I think he's a restricted free agent. Yeah, I don't think they want him back. <laughs> yeah, I read so an they, interview I, within yeah. like a German newspaper where he said he didn't expect to be back. Yeah, yeah, he was talking real greasy. Like, I remember that interview, man. I was like, dude, you're Paul Zipser. Stop it. Like, don't do this. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. Maybe you can see him and get another big man. Maybe. Um, yeah, but I think, I think for the most part, I think the key thing, actually, is is uh, is uh, Bobby Portis. You know, I think his signing, mm-hmm. if they're going to send him or not, yeah. That is going to impact, you know, of course, the money um, uh, they, you know, they have, and going forward next year, uh, how much they can spend if they uh, give Bobby a lot of money. I know Bobby. I know Dave mentioned that Bobby's kind of like I want to be six man, which kind of tells me that he's he doesn't want to break the bank. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that's going to be key, honestly. Um, if they're, I think they're going to keep Bobby Porter's. I, I can see why not. They love their draft picks. So he played well. You know, so I don't think he's going anywhere, but I think the money they pay him is going to be a big deal. But for the most part, I think your key components are there. I, I don't see, I don't you have like your, your, your hey, Dave, here you go, <clears throat> your core. Is, uh, <laughs> uh, Lori Marketing, Zach Levine, and Chris Dunn. Mm-hmm. Um, and now Wendell Carter. So, yeah, 
Those 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 are the guys that really only matter. Yeah, and yeah. I I think you also have to keep in mind that you know we're in the East. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like like no, I'm sorry, I was kind of going back to what you were saying earlier when you were like uh, they're going to be really good, but not win a championship, which is true. Uh, I'm not disagreeing with that, but being in the East, they're really good. Could get them to the Eastern Conference Finals and give them a shot. You know what I'm saying? Because it's the East. You know, they can definitely have a shot at it. But um, to answer your question, I think that if they do make any other moves, it'll be to get Jabari Parker. I don't see any other move outside of that. Um, that That's the only move I can see the Chicago Bulls making is, is getting Jabari Parker and spending some money for him. Uh, I understand that leery about it, you know what I'm saying, um, with the knee injuries, because I'm definitely leery about it. But uh, Chris definitely talked me into it. Um, as to why we should uh, get them. So, yeah, I don't. I, w- I would like to have them. I mean, like I said, we can, we're not in a position to turn down talent. So, I think, yeah, I think if they're going to make a move, that that's the move they're going to make. <laughs> yeah, and they got some spots, spots open. So I can't see them keeping it on cheek, right? On cheek is gonna, is, that they have, I read something, you know, I don't know. I think something with her in his con- a seat's contract where you yes. wave him or something. Yes. You, you, you only pay like Three half mil. the time. Three mil. <laughs> so, it's he's brilliant. Gone. It's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. So he gets and, paid regardless. So yeah. If you cut him, he gets the three million dollars uh on yeah. the buyout. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's 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 done deal. Um so yeah, the, I, the, I need his agent. Buy a park. Was it? I, said, have a I need a sheik's agent. One point. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. A sheik's agent, man, is the MVP. I'm just saying, like that's that's brilliant. That's a brilliant thing to have in a contract. Uh, well, I want to thank you guys so much for coming on the show and and, and talking bulls with me. Um, you guys want to plug yourself one more time? Check us out. Bow and bow on bulls. Um, check us out. Ballsports.com. We're on Stitcher. We're on iTunes. Uh, TuneIn Media. Spotify. Google Play, anywhere you listen, we're there. Uh, check us out on Twitter. You'll see me arguing. People, Chris knows I like having dumb arguments with people um, on Twitter. So at Ball Sports on Twitter and Ball Sports on Instagram. Say hey, say what's up, how you doing? Uh, we'll definitely uh, be responding. Thanks so much for being on the show, guys. Uh, yeah. Everybody, make sure you listen. It really is a great show, and I wouldn't tell you it was if it wasn't. Hey. So thanks again for being on there. Uh, you know, you guys are great. Love hanging out. Thank with you, me. man. Thanks for having us, bro. Really appreciate it, brother. So that's going to do it for this episode of Bill Swirsky Sports Talk Chicago. Thank you guys so much for listening. Please make sure you hit subscribe however you listen to podcasts, whether it's iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, or the TuneIn app. Share with your friends. Uh, leave comments. If you want to reach out on social media at uh, Swirsky Sports at ShyFanPat1, uh, SwirskySports.com, Facebook.com slash Swirsky Sports. Thank you guys so much for listening. And until next time, bear down. Smoking crack is not legal on the plains. Bears, 31 to negative 7. The Bears! Oh, when the Bears go bearing down.